Hey, it's Just Be Born. Today is Friday, and that means it is Sea Chest Puzzle Box Day. So, I'm getting ready to run another puzzle box on the mill. We made lots of changes to the program. That's what Josh is doing right now again. He's finishing up uh, the last changes. Um, because we ran another box last week and we got so close to being finished <laughs> once so again. Close, yet so far away. <laughs> yeah, so close yet so far. Um, <laughs> and so I'm just gonna come over here and set up the mill. I'm gonna put a little bit more MDF on here so that we can mill it all, uh, have a bigger spoil board area. Um, and then we'll set up an entire pallet and run an entire box. I think the program is gonna come out uh, the way I, we actually want it to. Well, pretty close this time. We made some more changes to some key components and some of the, uh, the mechanics and the appearances and, and things. So it'll be another experiment. But uh, all the little changes really add up. And the nice thing is, uh, this box is so much more complicated than the last the Jack in the Box, which by the way just sold out this week. Um, but there's a lot more to look forward to. There's a lot more puzzle involved and there's lots more that we're getting better at figuring out how to make it, bring it to the next level and bring, you know, the right level of puzzle into there and the right level of difficulty and things like that. So anyway. Uh, so I'm just gonna film the film a little bit of setting up this machine and hopefully we can be making parts very soon for the people who uh, were looking at my Instagram and Facebook uh, I got these puzzle chests with the mango fronts on here this is mango wood from Hawaii pretty cool very cool actually just the grain on that wood looks so good when you put some drawers on there and put a little bit of finish on there, it's really going to pop. So that's cool. So I just put this uh, new piece of MDF on here, uh, which extends uh, the spoil board uh, so that we can put a whole pallet worth of, uh, a whole puzzle box worth of material on here. And it's just sticking up a little bit high because we flushed this one off nice and parallel to the machine. So I'm just gonna, uh, Josh is using the computer by hand, so I'm just gonna by hand go back and forth and uh, flush this down a little bit.
so looking pretty good we got all these parts done we got all these parts done wench is done Bacote's done this is the catalog this is the really dense hardwood so I hope that uh, everything works out good on here it worked out good the last time we did it and right now Josh is touching off an engraving tool he's about to run that and it's going to do some engraving in the catalogs right yeah yep This is a sample of the parts that uh, we're getting back from uh, the coppersmith, Luke Marshall. He did a nice job on the handles there. And so we got a couple sets of those and then this right here is the compass. And that came out really cool as well. Super cool. He soldered it on this little pin so we can attach it to the box. So we finished making the CNC parts. The puzzle box is now finished, all the puzzle box parts that is. So now in theory, we just assemble it. So uh, we've put hundreds of hours into the program and running these parts. And I'm we're getting really close. Uh, it's definitely gonna save us a lot of time in the long run and uh, we're going to be able to make these boxes faster than we would have if we had just made all the parts by hand and there was no cnc involved so i'm glad that we took the time to set this up and moving forward of course with the next box it's going to make we're going to be even faster at this process so i'll just show you a sample part here this is one of the parts um, that we made today so this is made out of catalogs which is a little really hard wood and you can see that we have a little radius in here where the tool comes in and contours this and basically that's going to have to go away via a hand file or something you know maybe a chisel but this, again this is really hard wood so i don't know if a chisel is going to hold up for long so that's something that we need to uh you know go in there and by hand and fix some of that but uh you can see it's small parts we're doing some of this is small parts and uh, the precision and the accuracy needs to be all there so that everything fits together. And that's kind of the issues we are addressing today is uh, certain parts. So, so for instance, this part is supposed to go in this piece of mahogany. And you can see it's a little rough because we haven't inverted it yet. Um, but it's just, just like, you know, five thousands too wide or something about five thousandths too wide now this is right on this part right here I can tell from looking at the calipers it's supposed to be like uh, you know seven five four seven five right there we're reading like even a little bit under but the offset on this tool path is a little bit big so fusion doesn't really like us to well it doesn't enable us to just go in there and offset the tool bigger so that it cuts well, offset the tool smaller so that it cuts a bigger contour. You have to do that with every single tool path rather than just change your tool in the tool library. So little things like that are a little bit uh, annoying and you know you have to keep track of what's going on where in your program just so that uh, all the tool paths and all the offsets for the tools wind up uh, working out. So you know little things like that, every single part we gotta watch the tolerances make sure that uh, they turn out good. Uh, let me see, a lot of, lots of parts here I could show you, but I don't wanna give anything away. 
you know, there's lots of these wenge or wenge parts um, that we make and some of those are basic, but I'm gonna go in there and make some grooves in that so that when that's done, it will look like this with all of the uh, decoration on there. And so that's all gotta be done by hand. And of course this mortise in the center. So, um, all in all, hey, we're really close. Now we're so close, we almost could have had a box done today. So what we were missing was uh, we didn't run the program until 2.30 and it took us uh, two hours to run because, a little over two hours to run, because we slowed down all the feed rates and turned the rapid movements into feed rates just so that we could be sure that it's not rapiding into uh, the part or ruining something or plunging the head and ruining the machine. Um, but we're gonna be able to crank that up so it's gonna be not much faster. And the other thing is, like I mentioned previously, the the program set up to run by board and we're gonna change that so that it's gonna run by tool so that we only have like uh, 10 tool changes in there and the tool is gonna do what it does in this board and then it's gonna move over with the same tool and do all the other boards and it's not going to require a tool change and do one board at a time so that will optimize and make everything much faster uh, so that's good news. Well, that pretty much wraps up this episode of the Sea Chest Puzzle Box in progress. Come back next week for a new vlog and hopefully resulting in a finished puzzle box. We're still searching for it. All right, see you later.